Did I not clearly explain the circle of trust to you, Greg? This deal is not built on trust. Your eyes can deceive you. Don't trust them. Ads are baked into content like chocolate chips into a cookie. Except it's actually more like raisins into a cookie because no one f***ing wants them there. <laughs> Trust. More than money, it's trust that's the real liquid asset. Think of it this way. It's a finite resource. You can't trust everybody. It takes a long time to stockpile, but only one bad day to lose it all. On behalf of our company, I would like to offer a sincere apology. The largest institutions are the ones we have the least reason to trust. I mean, even the Verizon guy works for Sprint now. Can you hear me now? So I switched to Sprint. Can you hear that? A brand's success in many ways relies on trust as the principal asset that drives the business. Consumers engage products that they trust to last, trust to work, trust to be right, or even trust their life with. That same level of trust is implicit in the relationship between brands and agencies. Menken's is not Chanel. That's a vote of confidence. Last year, whistleblowers rocked the advertising industry when they publicly exposed the open secret of media agency rebates, or kickbacks, revealing business practices that are at best clandestine and at worst adverse to clients' best interests. This man may have single-handedly kicked off the controversy. Clients, advertisers, really want somebody to trust. They want somebody to give them advice. You know, in the same way that you hire a lawyer or an accountant or a financial advisor, you want somebody that's going to do right by you. But the second you cheat, that's a problem. Because how does the marriage ever get back together again? John Mendel served as the CEO of Mediacom in mid-2000s. Last year, he made a presentation at the Conference of the Association of National Advertisers, the ANA, that presented evidence that media rebates are common practice at all levels of the advertising industry. The goal here has been in the beginning from my presentation, and, and not just my presentation, the other consultants on this, was fix this industry, fix this trust problem, fix this business problem. In response, the ANA hired an outside research firm to conduct an in-depth investigation into transparency within media agencies. The ANA has accused media agencies of taking money from media owners and not delivering it back to the clients, to hiding it away in their own pockets. Um, so they've sort of gone to war with media agencies, essentially. So, in order to find out why trust in the industry is so low, Campaign went to France to the Cannes Lions Festival, where the industry's biggest titans and fastest growing stars gather every year to, well, basically to give themselves a big pat on the back. I can't sit across from you and say, hey, trust me, uh, it doesn't work, so I have to earn your trust. That trust needs to be a really strong collaboration. Trust is one of the key determinants for good work, for good creative work. We're moving to an evolution in our industry where we are increasingly guiding clients through areas of specialism that they don't have. And at that point, trust becomes the single most important thing between an agency and its clients. The digitalization of commerce you know, is a massive change, a tsunami of change for us as advertisers and, uh, and the manufacturers and for the advertising industry. So there's a lot of unknown out there and I think that creates an element of distrust. A lot of people use the word trust and I take a little bit of an issue with that. I mean, uh, you can you could call them relationship you know, questions, but, but you know, there are clients that we have deep and meaningful relationships with. I date younger men. Predominantly men in their 20s. And when I date younger men, I have sex with younger men. And when I have sex with younger men, I encounter very directly... This is Cindy Gallup. She's one of the most provocative critics of the advertising and marketing industry. And as someone who used to run an agency, who better to talk to about the ANA report than her? My reaction when the ANA report came out was not in the least bit surprised. 
Why? Because we all know that this has been going on in our industry for years. And to be frank, I think a far better response on the part of our industry to that report is to say, we're extremely grateful that somebody took the time to really drill into this because in 2016, you know, this should not be even being talked about, let alone happening. We all want as an industry collectively to be working completely, honestly, ethically and transparently with our clients. And is that what you think we're going to say? Um, very sadly, um, I think it's not what people are going to say, which is why I appreciate this opportunity to exhort them to do precisely that. The US has, for many years, has been considered a zero rebate market. What the findings of the report suggest is that there is rebate practice in the US. The words they used was pervasive. They suggested that it, all types of agencies were involved in some form of uh, non-transparent practices, what they called it. Um, and it wasn't happening on the fringes of a nascent digital market. This was happening within TV, print and outdoor, which is what the evidence that they found. One of the criticisms of the report was that it was anonymous, it didn't name names, and it didn't identify specific practices within specific agencies. Media agencies would argue clients do not pay a fair price for the job they expect their media agencies to do. The media discipline has never been more complex. Media agencies are making enormous investments in tech, tools and technology to deliver a better service for clients. Meanwhile, clients are trying to erode the amount of money they pay their agencies for that service. I think that the advertiser community have to look also to what they're doing and what they're asking of agencies. And I'll, I want to give you an example. So we've just come out of a very large and comprehensive uh, pitch process. The, procurement, uh, part of that organisation, uh, decided that they wanted uh, the pitching agencies and us as incumbents to engage in a e-auction. And we said to them, we don't think that's an appropriate process because we're not the owners of that media. What right have I got to be sitting in real time bidding pricing for something that I ultimately don't control and I don't own? And actually what we saw happening to the other two agencies that went through that process was literally one undercutting the other, re-undercutting, undercutting, undercutting, and this just went on for hours and we just, it was crazy. Clients should step right back and go, we need to completely rethink our agency relationships and we need to examine ourselves in terms of how we can open up and facilitate an environment where Agencies don't feel so bloody squeezed in terms of profit margins and fee negotiations and procurement rigours that they have been forced to resort to this. Okay, so it's absolutely physician heal thyself as well for clients. The first question around trust is, are the people buying media, placing media on behalf of clients, operating in a completely transparent way with the, with the clients? And I think the ANA report is pointing to a sense that people think that's not the case. Fairly, I think, media agencies can argue that by pulling together a whole load of resources, they themselves earn volume discounts that clients wouldn't otherwise have access to and that they want to take a piece of that. Some clients might say, well, no, we don't like any of those sorts of things. We just like to be able to pay, you know, hourly fees and have none of that. I think all of these debates are debates that are perfectly valid so long as they're had out in the open. That's part one of trust. Part two of trust, I think, is in programmatic where there is so much ad fraud now that that isn't about agencies, you know, making money where they shouldn't be. That's about terrorist groups and all sorts of criminals and all sorts of people around the world who have created bots and have created websites that don't exist that try and trick the exchange into believing that they do exist who are essentially stealing money. Ad fraud. Um, this is you know, a very big market, the advertising market. There's estimates between seven to ten billion dollars of ad fraud out there. And with that level of fraud, I think we've got to be concerned. There was a study recently done in the US that had ad fraud looking at the big advertisers going from 2% up to 35%. And up at that high level were some big companies. It turns out that ad fraud 
is an amazing monetization engine for compromising ordinary consumers. Here's how the bad guys do ad fraud and how they make money. First, you compromise a large number of computers. You break into their computers and you install a modern day virus. We call this malware. The malware that we care about is ad fraud malware. That malware is a bot. A bot is just a web browser running invisibly in the background. So the people who do this have assembled a small army of invisible web browsers that can visit whatever websites they choose. And what they do is they sell visits. So if you're, if you're a black hat botnet operator, the product you have to sell is a certain number of visits per day. And someone wants more visits to their web properties and those are the buyers. So sometimes it's totally bogus websites that have no real human audience, so they buy an audience. Other times it's ad tech companies that are in effect traffic brokers that sell visits on to name brand publishers. So advertisers who are paying for advertising based on how many times an ad is shown are paying in proportion to the visits to a given website. And if websites are buying visitors from botnets, that's how the money changes hands and that's how the views are inflated and this crime is perpetrated really across the globe. It's so easy to buy traffic. What that means is that the expertise that agencies bring to bear in media buying hasn't naturally led to zero fraud. Uh, in fact, some of the most sophisticated ad buying operations that we have ever seen have had very high levels of fraud. This, by virtue of its profits, is the world's most sophisticated cybercrime. And marketers and agencies are both victims of the world's most sophisticated cyber criminals because the biggest profits have attracted the best hackers. If any of these figures are correct, so whether you can debate whether it's 30%, 40%, 50% of programmatic advertising is being watched by, you know, computers that aren't people, uh, and people continue to place advertising on websites where the, where the exchange has been fooled and, and it's not a real, then there is a lot of fraudulent advertising and that I think is going to break down the trust not only between clients and the media but also with the end consumer because I think it's this that is driving people to towards ad blocking there's a big picture going on here you know advertising is not something that just happens in a discreet little advertising bubble it drives the economy it drives um, it drives business growth um, so if if marketers can't reach consumers that's a significant problem ad blocking is 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 definitely a symptom of of of, of what's not working uh, today people are voting with their feet uh, people are frustrated annoyed um, by uh, by the ad experience and uh, we would do well to, uh, to look at the causes rather than only the symptoms of ad blocking um, because ultimately that is what's going to be essential for us uh, in terms of being able to connect with consumers in the future. Well, I think trust generally uh, is, is lower in the world. I think the world's gone through a lot of turmoil. Uh, you see trust uh, in politicians going down, you see trust um, in CEOs going down and big business, etc. Um, it, actually, the brands have fared better than most, but there, there is a uh, suspicion um, uh, around industry generally. So the, the fascinating thing about trust is that the way trust manifests and is built has fundamentally changed, and it's changed in a way that has not happened for a long time. So quick, quick history lesson here. Um, so go back 100 years, who do people trust? Largely, church, state, monarchy. And the basis for that trust is usually books. It's rule books. It's thou shalt not. Um, and if you do, you'll end up either in hell or in prison. But it was done through books and you believed. That was faith. And when consumerism kicked in, we started to believe in different things. It might have been 
you know, wonderful, big, new brands like Coca-Cola, Dove Soap, all those sorts of things. But the way we trusted them was exactly the same. Because what happened is the brands discovered advertising. And advertising created these beautiful fictions that we believed in. So it wasn't books, but it was stories told on television that we believed in. And that could be that, you know, I am this amazing kind of rugged person because I drink that scotch or smoke that cigarette. But it's still belief. So what I'm believing in may have changed. It may not be church state um, monarchy anymore, but fundamentally it's still a belief thing and I'm believing in things that have been fed to me. Where digital fundamentally changed that was I don't have to believe anymore. I experience. And the way that happens is through social media. So right, let me give you an example to, to make this less abstract. So there's a hotel chain over there. It does a fantastic advertising campaign that tells me it's got lovely crisp sheets. Meanwhile, I can go to TripAdvisor and 2,000 people like me stayed there at the same chain last week. And they said it really wasn't very clean at all. In fact, it was terrible. And they put their own pictures up there. Who am I going to believe? Who am I going to trust? I'm either asked to believe in a fiction created by the hotel, or I'm asked to trust the reality of, that these people have experienced. And that's the point. It's about experience rather than faith or belief. I now experience things through the well over three billion people who are actually connected and have connected devices. So consumers informing other consumers' decisions based on their experience, not based on faith. There are data indicating that 80% of brand owners feel that they're delivering great brand experiences to people. And when you ask the same question to people, 8% of them agree. So it's pretty symptomatic of, of the gap there is and of the degree of complacency uh, to which we've fallen victim to. We're living in interesting times as an industry. You know, we are, there is a sort of perfect storm brewing. You know, when you look at you know, the transparency issue, the viewability issue, the ad blocking issue, and the ad fraud issue, there are a number of major challenges which we need to be collectively addressing as an industry, which, um, which will be defining you know, how, we, how we're going to be operating in the future. And um, none of those issues will be solved um, separately and, they, and none of them will be solved only by one of the stakeholders. They will require um, uh, collaboration, they will, they will require longer term thinking and they will require also thinking about what's right for the person we are connecting with. You know? uh, because ultimately it is, it is, it is that person, that the, it's the people who are going to be telling us what, what the right way forward is as an industry. There is a difference between fucking and making love. Right? When we get to the honesty and integrity of making love and being in a relationship, no games, no bullshit, we're going to have a healthier relationship and we're going to have a healthier community. If it's just to take advantage of each other, to prove I'm bigger, to prove I'm better, and it's all about me, it's never going to be healthy. I kind of think we should have healthy relationships and that healthy relationships are based on openness, honesty, integrity.